All right, I want to show you this real quick from terrestrial biomes. We're about to go into aquatic biomes, but if you look at this, you'll see two major abiotic factors. You've got the amount of moisture or rainfall, precipitation, whatever you want to call it, the amount of moisture in the air and the um, temperature of that area. Um, as you go up, you're losing temperature. Your, your temperature is dropping. It's getting cooler. So you get up here to the tundra, that's the coldest. You get down here, the tropics have the warmest biome, the hottest biomes. Um, and going left and right, you see desert. If you get into more moisture, you can support some more trees, a lot more plant life and more trees. You get into the rainforest, you get even more trees because there's more water. Same thing here. So you can see the patterns on here. Um, we've talked about tropical, temperate, and arctic. We didn't talk about subarctic, but that just means almost arctic. Almost, just barely there. But aquatic systems. So I want to talk about aquatic ecosystems. There, are, there's just like with these, just like with the terrestrial biomes. There's some major, some major and main abiotic factors that determine what's there. In the aquatic ecosystems, there are also a lot of important um, abiotic factors. One of those being the amount of salt. The amount of salt. So salinity um, is the measurement of salt in the water. So you can go ahead and write these out. Um, pressure, if you can see on your notes where it says pressure, um, for pressure there, so you got salinity, which is the measurement of salt. Pressure is the amount, uh, if you think about it, if you think about what, where you're standing or sitting, the air above you is pushing down on you, and the air above that is pushing down on that. And you keep going up, you've got trillions and trillions of air molecules that are pushing down on you oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide they're all pushing down on you so that's why if you go to get in a plane then you can feel there's a difference in pressure and your ears might pop or just driving in a mountain up a mountain but if you go 10 or 12 feet underwater you get the same popping sense that you get the same pressure because when you go underwater there's even more pressure water is a lot more dense so you'll get a lot more pressure um, pushing down on you so if you think about going a mile down or three or four miles down, that is a long way down. There's a lot of pressure. So the organisms there are going to have to be able to um, to live under that pressure or uh, lack thereof. Light, that's a big deal too. If you think about two reasons for light, think about the food chain. First, the producers need light. So if there is no light, those producers can't go through photosynthesis. Or they can, but they just can't do it as well as, as closer to the surface. And if you think about a shark eating a fish or a fish eating, I don't know, trying to get a, one fish getting a smaller fish, light is needed for them to be able to see the predator or see their prey. And then oxygen, dissolve oxygen. I don't know if you know this, but fish can drown. Um, now, obviously, if you take a fish out of water, they'll, they'll die. But if you keep a fish still and don't let the water go through their gills, then they can die as well. So, for example, sharks, uh, there's, a, there's a good bit of fish that they have to move while they're sleeping because they're having to get oxygen from the water. So water goes in their mouth, out their gills, and similar to how our alveoli pull oxygen from the air and put it into the bloodstream, their gills do the same thing. Their gills take oxygen from the water and put it into their bloodstream. So all of these things salinity pressure light oxygen they change for different parts of the uh, different ecosystems that are aquatic um, so salinity if you'll think about salinity is going to be higher in the ocean so you might want to write that out salinity is high in the ocean low in freshwater pressure as you go deeper in water pressure is going to increase deeper equals more light is going to um, decrease as you go down because light, uh, every time it goes past through it, uh, the deeper it goes, the more um, light is uh, diffracted, uh, is it diffracted, refracted? Um, is it, it hits oxygen and hits water and hits debris that's in the water and it doesn't, it just, it can't go down. So if you look at the surface of the water, it's very clear. As you go down, it gets darker and darker and darker until there's no light, zero light reaching the bottom. <clears throat> And oxygen. Dissolved oxygen means um, how much air or oxygen is floating in the water. So in a fish tank, you need to regulate the salinity um, and oxygen. So oxygen, if your fish tank at home does not have oxygen in it, it doesn't have air bubbling up or being pushed down from a filter like a waterfall, then the fish will die. They will drown. Um, 
they may get sick first, but eventually they will they will die. So just like terrestrial biomes have abiotic factors that are very important, things like temperature and uh, precipitation and altitude and latitude, here are some four that we typed out, mostly salinity. Um, salinity is going to be the most important for these, so you can keep an eye out for that, or we'll talk about for the rest of the day. Um, these two are pretty important as well. Pressure changes, um, but light and oxygen, I would say, are the, of these four, are the, the second most important, second and third most important. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and jump over to the aquatic biomes notes, which is uh, the next slide. Um, here's some quick facts. We're not going to go over a whole lot. Uh, most of the earth is covered in water. I think you've already learned this. Most of the earth's water is salt water. Most of the earth's water is salt water. So 3% is fresh water. And of that 3%, only 1% of that 3% is available for us to drink. Very little of what we see on earth as water that makes our planet the blue planet. Very little of it is there to, uh, or can we drink, can we consume safely? Um, and algae is the main producer because think about the earth is covered in algae. I mean, it's covered in water way more than there is land for trees. There's places for algae to grow. That's where a lot of our oxygen comes from. Most of our oxygen comes from algae, not from trees. <clears throat> so we got freshwater ecosystems. Um, this, I would consider this a lake. This over here is a marsh. This would be a swamp. There's differences, but all three of these are freshwater ecosystems. That fresh water, not salt. So big again, big anti, uh, big abiotic factor here, or that's not here rather, is salt. There's very little or zero salt. Um, some of the dissolved minerals can lead to where there's some salt, but very little salt, not to where you can taste it, um, or not to where it matters substantially. Um, different things you can think of different streams and rivers. Um, you guys have probably seen a pond. Probably a lake. You know, there's swamps all around and marshes. There are some marshes. Um, the difference between these two, you can see right here, the difference between a swamp and a marsh is a swamp is mostly trees. The main vegetation there is going to be trees. You can write this out. The difference between a swamp and a marsh. Uh, a marsh has very few trees, mostly grasses. <clears throat> it's mostly grasses. That's why you can see this is pretty, I would consider this a uh, marsh, and this is a swamp. We have a lot more swamps around here than we do marshes. But we do have some marshes. If you go out to Grand Bay, you can see some of the area. Um, if you go far out, if you look up from the tower, you can see a lot of marsh. Um, I believe that would be considered marsh. <clears throat> and then we have tributary. So another one of the things on your um, in your notes is a river versus a tributary. What is the difference? I don't want you to give me the definition of both. I want you to explain the difference. So a river is a moving body of water. Normally we think of streams as smaller and rivers as larger. If there's a stream that flows into a river, the stream would be a tributary into the river. If that river flows into another river and gives all of its water to the next river, then this river is called a tributary. So let me show you an example. This is, uh, I think this is the Mississippi watershed. There may be more rivers. But look, look right here. You have the Mississippi River. This is the Mississippi River pretty much going up and down. And you have all these other ones, Missouri River, the Ohio, Tennessee, um, Arkansas, you have uh, all these other rivers that flow into the Mississippi River. So even though the Ohio River is a very large river, it is a tributary to the Mississippi. <clears throat> so back in, think about like medieval times, long time ago, if a conqueror went into a, uh, an area and showed, hey, listen, we can destroy your city or you can just give us money, a lot of times they say, hey, you know what? Or sometimes after they destroyed their city, they say, hey, we're coming back and every year we want, you know, $30,000 in gold every year. You need to give us this money. And that, that area would have to give what's called tribute to that king or that conqueror, whoever that is, a leader of that army or that group of people. So to tri give tribute is to kind of give something of yours to that other thing, the thing that is larger than you, that's greater than you. So to pay tribute or to be a tributary. So the Ohio River is a tributary. It gives its water to the Mississippi. Um, you have different lakes, largest river in the world, and a pond versus a lake, the biggest difference is a size, is the size. So you have river versus tributary, swamp versus marsh, and pond versus lake. 